the theme from the Sears Radio Theater. Tonight, a story of the West with Lorne Green as your host. Here's a preview. Do you know, my dear niece, that last I saw you, you were this high? Yes, sir. Dorothy, I brought you a gift. Uncle, sorry, you shouldn't have. It's a bottle of Zora Ezekiel Miller's snake oil medicine free of charge. The Sears Radio Theater will begin after this message from your local station. This is Lauren Green. It's the summer of 1907. From a porch swing in the town of Tecumseh, Nebraska, you can see most of the town, down Main Street to the railroad depot. Tecumseh is one of those towns where it doesn't take a person much more than a few days to know everyone. And with the help of Mrs. Carrie Woodruff's tongue, you can get to know just about everything, too. Now, there's one thing that makes Tecumseh more than just any other railroad town, and that's the Tecumseh Pig Festival. This pig festival isn't just for folks in Nebraska. Tecumseh gets pigs from Kansas and the Dakotas. Indiana Hoosier folks bring Indiana Hoosier hogs. Next to the hog judging and the pork barbecue and the greased pig catching contest, there's one other event that makes the Tecumseh Pig Festival especially famous. And that's the flapjack flipping contest. All the lady folks take a flapjack and a skillet, and they race from the railroad station, clear on up to Polding Check's general store, flipping their flapjacks as they go. Whatever lady gets there first, without dropping her flapjack, wins. This year, the prize is having a dress made at Lottie Anderson's dress shop. Mayor Baker thought of that. Nice prize, huh? But the pig festival isn't till the end of the summer. Right now, there's nothing much to do except watch the trains come in. For this is a story of simpler times. And this is just the beginning of that story. adventure in radio listening. Five nights of exceptional entertainment every week. Brought to you in Elliot Lewis' production of The Sears Radio Theater. Our story, Uncle Zora Comes to the Pig Festival by Patricia Ann Joyce. Our stars, Marvin Miller, Virginia Gregg, and Joan McCall. The Sears Radio Theater is brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company. Sears, where America shops for value. Carrie Woodruff has won the Tecumseh Pig Festival Flapjack Flipping Contest for three years running. The fellas at Poldinchek's general store wonder if she won because she's the fastest or if she won because the other ladies were afraid of her tongue, of all the bad things Carrie Woodruff might say about them if they beat her. Of course, Carrie isn't really a bad sort. She's been a friend to the widow Dorothy Griffith ever since Eugene passed away. Right now, for instance, she's entering Griffith's dry goods store. Dorothy? Oh, Dorothy, Carrie, over here. Man, think that sunlight's so bright I can't make out a thing indoors. Oh, there you are, hiding behind all them boats of calico. I might have known. Lizzie Bainbridge, who's just in? And every time she's here, she's got to see everything in the store. What a fuss budget she is. Oh, it's no bother. Well, my, the boys are buzzing around my lily like bees around honey. Why, you should see her, Dorothy, blushing as pink as that nice gingham fabric you sold me last week. Pretty Baker's always been sweet on my lily. I do favor him, and it's not just because he's the mayor's son. Of course not. Well, since there's no one about, I do believe it's only a kindness that I should tell you. Tell me what? It's better that the news should come from my mouth than from some town busybody. Well, news is news, no matter how it comes. And it's about your darling daughter, Melinda J. What about her? Well, granted, she's a mite younger than my Lily. Of course, I come by my Lily at a very early age, as well you know. Yes, Carrie, yeah, I know. Now, uh, Melinda Jane may be young, but... She's still too old. For what? Tree climbing. Tree climbing? In the presence of a young man, no less. Melinda, Jane. And you know these young men will stand at the base of the tree looking for glimpses of ankles and bloomers. Enough, Carrie. I'll talk to her. Yes, if it was my Lily, I would talk to her indeed. Yes. 
Carrie. I will. Thank you. This is her coming now, I believe. Mama? Yes, dear. Mama, we got a telegram wire. A telegram wire? Who'd be sending you a telegram wire? Oh, Mrs. Winters, ma'am. I didn't see you. I'm not used to the light yet. I know. The same thing happened to my eyes, child. Now, who sent you a wire? I don't know. It's to Mama. Came from Ohio. Ohio? Oh, who could that be, Dora? Oh, Beth, give me the envelope, Melinda Jane. Here. Well, who's it from? Land sake. What does it say, Dorothy? It's from my Uncle Zola. He's coming into Tecumseh for the pig festival. What's it say, Dorothy? It, it says, my dearest niece, Dorothy, stop. Plan arrive to Tecumseh and stay through the coming pig festival. Stop. Letter with more specific details follows. Stop. I trust that you can provide suitable accommodations. Stop your loving uncle. Zora. Well, it seems to me, Dorothy, you must have wealthy kin you ain't talked about. I ain't heard of anyone using so many words in a wire. Uncle Zora ain't wealthy. He just talks a lot. Is this Uncle Zora? Is, uh, is he from Ohio? All parts. Carrie, as you know, Melinda Jane and I got some talking to do. Oh, oh indeed, indeed. Yes, I'll be going and let you two do your talking. Bye now, Dorothy. Melinda Jane, you best remember to mind your mother now. I will, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Well, now? Mama, is that the same Uncle Zora that used to sell snake oil medicine? Hush, now. Not a word about that. Mama, I know when to keep my mouth closed. Can't I even talk about certain things in privacy? Melinda Jane, you think you're too big to have me take a hairbrush to your bottom? Mama, what are you talking about? Because if you are too big for me to take a hairbrush to your bottom, you're too big to go tree climbing with a young man. It was just with Freddie Baker. That don't make no difference, young lady. Oh, every time that Carrie Woodruff comes in here, you get crankier than our old rooster, Julia. Don't you sass your eldest, young lady. He says It's the truth. Hush, now. She pretends to be kindly, but she ain't. She is kindly, honey. When a woman's a widow, she's got to be extra careful. <laughs> Linda Jane. Yes, Mama. Come here, honey, quick. Yes, Mama. Your great uncle Zora's letter, come. Oh, when's he arrive? On Wednesday, the 11 5. The night train? He's bringing a special secret guest. None other than William Jennings Bryan. The man who was running to be president? The very same, dear. We're going to put William Jennings Bryan in the parlor. We'll have to get Freddie Baker and the Woodruff boys to move your bed in there. Then I'll buy a straw mattress for you from Mrs. Woodruff. Oh, won't she be surprised when she sees William Jennings Bryan at our house? She sure will. Well, not a word about him visiting now, honey. Uncle Zora wanted us to keep William Jennings Bryan's arrival a secret. Yes, ma'am. But uh, won't Mrs. Woodruff make you tell her who you're borrowing the mattress for? Man, thanks. Well, I'll think of something. Maybe the good Lord will pardon me a little white lie. Just a few weeks ago, you could sit out on the porch swing all night. Now the late night air is getting a nip in it. And the Tecumseh Pig Festival is the only good thing between this evening and a cold Nebraska winter. Dorothy Griffith and her daughter Melinda Jane are off to the train station to meet the 11 5 You'll remember Uncle Zorro is coming in from Ohio with his honored guest, which is why they're all decked out for Sunday. I can hear it, Mama. Listen, on time. Oh, Melinda Jane, you got your hair ribbon on crooked. You don't want William Jennings Brown to think too slovenly now, do you? I checked myself three times in the mirror, like you said. Well, then it slipped. Here, let me fix that. Ow! Hold oh, still. You hurt. Oh, hush now. Good grooming is worth suffering for. How are you going to know him? Uncle Zora never been hard to miss. Mama, I'm scared. Ain't a thing to be scared of, honey. But I never met anybody more famous than Mayor Baker. Well, neither have I. Just remember, deep down inside, they're all people, even William Jennings Bryan. Mama, is that him? No, dear. What's Uncle Zora look like? There he is. That's Uncle Zora. The fat one with the flat nose? Yes, dear. Where's William Jennings Bryan? Well, we'd best find out. Come along. Zora, 
Uncle Dollar. Why is it, my little niece, Dorothy? Uncle Dollar, how pleased to have you here in Tecumseh. Dorothy, how lovely you look. Oh, now, Uncle Dollar. Ah, the evening's half-light only enhances the diagrams of beauty in your eyes. <laughs> your face gleams with lustrous health. Truly, you have held your beauty through the loss of Eugene. Although I am sure you must bear the great loss locked within the confines of your bosom. This is a public location. Well, you must realize that at 82, I only refer to certain portions of the anatomy as figures of speech. You are speaking in front of a child. Mama. A young lady. Can this be my great niece, Melinda Jane Griffith, this angular Artemis of the prairie? Do you know, my dear niece, last I saw you, you were this high. Yes, sir. Dorothy, I brought you a gift. Uncle Zora, you shouldn't have. It's a bottle of Zora Ezekiel Miller's snake oil medicine, free of charge. Oh. Well, now, thank you, Uncle Zora. Uncle Zora, uh, can we meet William Jenny Bryant? Ah, of course. <laughs> Follow me. <laughs> I trust you have found suitable accommodations for him. I thought he could sleep in the parlor. Now, Dorothy, a rough lean-to would have been adequate. You can't put William Jennings Bryan in a lean-to. Mm, perhaps the parlor is more suited to his exalted position. <laughs> ah, this is it. <laughs> Mama, this is the stock car. Hush now, honey. My good man, claim number 4483, please. Right, sir. Thank you, my good man. Thank you. Mama, you didn't tell me Uncle Zora was bringing a hog. I didn't know myself, dear. Zora, why didn't you tell us you were bringing a hog? This is not just a hog. This is William Jennings Bryant. What? This hog is William Jennings Bryant. I brought him as my surprise entry in the Tecumseh Pig Festival. I thought you were bringing the real William Jennings Bryant. Excuse me. I'll... I'll wait for you at the house. Melinda Jane, would you like to see William Jennings Bryan do some of his tricks? No, thank you, sir. Now, all children like to see... I am not a child. I just turned 16. i got to start acting like an adult, and I want to start getting treated like one. Oh, my dear, I meant no offense. You slippery varmint. Ain't you never stopped selling snake oil, Uncle Zora? Even to your own kin? Why, my dear Melinda Jane, I do believe you're angry with me. Angry? I'm angrier than a cross-eyed rattlesnake that can't strike it at an overweight gopher. At me? Yes, at you. I know it's against Sunday school teaching to be mad at your kin, but I, I could just pour turpentine on your head for what you've done to my mama. I've done nothing to your mama. Telling her you were bringing William Jennings Bryan, then showing up with a hog. Oh, yes. The confusion between the human Mr. Bryan and my hog is a never-ending source of amusement. For you, maybe, but not for us. You don't know the cleaning and preparations Mom and I went through. She's got plenty enough to do with the store now that Daddy's dead without cleaning up after you and that silly pig. Oh, my dear child, uh, young lady, I shall try to be more considerate in the future. Oh, that ain't all. You think my Mama's fine because she still looks pretty, but she ain't fine. Ever since Daddy died, she lost all her gumption. She lets that Carrie Woodruff bully her silly. She don't never stand up to her like she used to. Oh, I'm sorry. She thought if you brought the real William Jennings Bryan, old Carrie Woodruff would have to sit up and take notice. After all, anybody who knows the real William Jennings Bryan gets to be respectable without even trying. But somebody who has an uncle with a hog named William Jennings Bryan is sitting pretty for one of Carrie Woodruff's tongue lashes. Melinda Jane, wait. My niece, uh, Oh. Ah, uh, William. What to do? What to do? That's the mayor's boy, Freddy, over by the depot, touching up the paint on the sign. The one that says, Welcome to Tecumseh, home of the pig festival. Nothing much has been happening in the town, pre-pig festival. Carrie Woodruff says no one has seen Uncle Zora since he arrived because he's a lazy no-account. Spends all his time poking around the old tool shed. Carrie reckons he's got a bottle hidden back there. 
That's a shame. The last thing a widowed woman needs is an unrespectable uncle hanging around. And you think it's Lily? Now, Dorothy, I'm sure, but what I heard was that Freddie Baker is real, real sweet on one of the town girls. Said she was a mite young yet, but he was willing to wait. That could be my Lily. Yes, it could, Carrie. Freddie also said this young woman was the only girl in town who wasn't a silly goose. That must be my Lily. Yes, I suppose. Well, Linda Jane, honey, where are you going? Just round by the back garden, Mama. Going to visit your Uncle Zara up here? No, Mrs. Woodruff. I'm going to do some hoeing is all. Well, enjoy yourself then, Melinda Jane. Yes, ma'am, I will. My precious Dorothy, whatever does your uncle do out there in the tool shed? I promised Uncle Zara I wouldn't tell. Well, your secret is safe with me, Dorothy. You know that. Oh, I know, Carrie. But a promise is a promise. <laughs> Pulling these here beans. What's it look like I'm doing? Pulling a tooth? I believe I still detect a note of animosity. What's that mean? I believe you're still mad at me. Madder than a hornet whose nest got kicked by a mule. Oh, heck, Uncle Zoe, it ain't just you. It's Carrie Woodruff in this town, too. Is Carrie Woodruff the statuesque blonde woman with the insidiously persistent tongue? Yes, she's an oatmeal head. Oh, yes, I quite agree. Heck. You and your blasted hog wouldn't be half so bad if I wasn't afraid of what Carrie Woodruff might say about you. Not that I care, but my mama could lose her respectability. But your mother is the epitome of goodness. Mama is good. But ever since Daddy passed on, she's been real careful about her respectability. Mama's so determined to stay in Mrs. Woodruff's good graces that she lets her win the flatjack flipping contest. Mama used to win every year before Daddy died. Why is Mrs. Woodruff's opinion so important? I don't rightly know. I think everybody in town hates her as much as me. But there ain't a soul with a gumption to cross her. My most precious niece, if I could perhaps create the downfall of this Medusa like Mrs. Woodruff, would I regain your good graces? That depends on what you got in mind. We must publicly humiliate Mrs. Woodruff. What good's that going to do? People are not unlike chickens. Huh? If you can weaken the chief chicken in the pecking order, the other chickens will turn on it. So it is with loquacious women who dominate small towns. You figure if we make a fool of Carrie Woodruff, people will stop listening to it? Exactly. The plan is infallible. Infinitely more foolproof than snake oil. We use the same play on names that fool your mother. Let Carrie Woodruff think that William Jennings Bryant is kidnapped. Let her spread the gossip. Then let her be surprised when the town finds out that William Jennings Bryant is a hog. Are you sure this is foolproof? Of course. However, we mustn't even try it unless we can persuade Dorothy to leave town. <laughs> take care of the store myself. But four whole days. No. I think I better stay home after all. But Aunt Mary said it was real urgent that you come. Yeah, that's true. And Mr. Woodruff has to go to Gopher Junction anyway. Yes, you're right. It's silly to worry. Your bags are outside in the buggy. Oh, thank you, dear. Well, goodbye. Uh, have a good trip, Dorothy. I will, Zara. How's our cunning scheme progressing? Everything's ironing out smooth. Excellent. I shall hide William Jennings Bryan while you secure the attentions of Carrie Woodruff. I don't know if you can get her to listen to you. Of course I can. She thinks you're a lazy, no-good drunkard. Nonsense. I shall woo her with the skill of Richard III seducing Lady Anne. Uncle Zora, you didn't say anything about seduction. Shakespeare, my dear, merely quoting from the bar. Don't you do nothing from the bar, Uncle Zora. Carrie Woodruff can smell liquor through French perfume and garlic and, and cinnamon and just about anything. She may be chief chicken in the pecking order, but that don't mean she's as dumb as a chief chicken. She only needs to be as vain, my dear Nieslet. Only as vain. Enter. Indeed, please, enter. Oh, I'm an entertainer, sir, Peter. Hurry on over here as fast as ever my legs could carry me. Mrs. Woodruff and Anna. Zora Ezekiel Miller at your service. 
How come you're bending over like that? You've been tippling? Mrs. Woodress, I am merely bowing, as is the custom of the English court. Surely you must be aware of the perfunctory nature of this gesture, a woman of your breeding and temperament. Well, I don't know what Dorothy's been telling you about my temperament, but I think it's just fine. On the contrary, my niece spoke only of your excellent qualities. That is why in her absence I must petition you for aid. Oh, Mrs. Woodruff, help an aging statesman in distress. Lend a caution. Get up off your knees this instant. Somebody might could come in. Please help us, Mrs. Woodruff. Zora Ezekiel Miller, this is an abomination. You're going to tear the hem of my dress, and if you do, I'm calling him the sheriff. Please, Mrs. Woodruff. You get up off the floor right now. Falling all over the place, indeed. Uh, I only wanted to plead a case. Now, don't you think Dorothy Griffith's got enough troubles without having you take to drink? My lips have not touched alcohol in 20 years. And I assure you that this is a very respectable case. <laughs> I don't know what the likes of you knows about respectability. Verily, it is a secret case. What kind of a secret? If I impart this secret to you, you must promise to assist me. No, I can't. No, can't do a thing till I know what the secret is. Zora Ezekiel Miller, you know your secret is safe with me. Well, I must have your vow that you will aid me. Well, of course I will. Now, tell me every little thing. Mrs. Woodruff, I have cause to believe that you are the only person outside my immediate family who knew that William Jennings Bryan was staying in the Griffith tool shed. What's that? William Jennings Bryan in a tool shed? Oh. If that ain't a lot of malarkey, I don't know what is. Come, come, my dear Mrs. Woodruff. You know that William Jennings Bryan likes simple things. Oh, yes, sir, that's true. He's a man of the people. He said he came here with the express intention of secretly having the opportunity to listen to the heartbeat of America. He did? And he told me he had the privilege of speaking to an exquisite, intelligent blonde woman just before... Mm -hmm. Ah, but I am ahead of myself. I assume that blonde woman was you. Zora Ezekiel Miller, I don't know where you get your notions, but... Unless he meant my niece, Dorothy. Oh, not necessarily. Ah, but William Jennings Bryan spoke so flatteringly of her, so touchingly. Uh, it might could have been me. Speaking to Mr. Bryan without rightly recollecting who it was. Indeed. Well, it is a possibility. Then, my good Mrs. Woodruff, will you go with me and explain to the local authorities that you spoke to William Jennings Bryan? He is in great distress, and we must need come to his aid. In distress? He has been kidnapped. Kidnapped? Just last night, right here in Tecumseh. Oh, Zora Ezekiel Miller. I don't know what kind of trick you're playing, but it ain't gonna work. My most esteemed Mrs. Woodruff, I can assure you that everything Just I say... Just because I live in Tecumseh don't mean I don't read the local gazette. I beg your pardon? I read in the paper that there was a Chautauqua tent meeting in Kentucky yesterday and today. The honored speaker was Mr. William Jennings Bryan. Uh, oh, yes, yes, indeed. You see, William Jennings Bryan has a double. The only thing that's double, Zora Ezekiel Miller, is your vision after drinking too much whiskey. I ain't usually driven to cursing, but horse feathers is all I gotta say to you. So, your method for fixing the chief chicken in the pecking order never fails. And it's even better than snake oil medicine. Well, well. No, Melinda Jane, I've lost my touch. Indeed you have. At 82, one looks back at life, hoping to have wrested a few bits of wisdom from its mysteries. All I know is that my mama's goose is cooked. Right now, Carrie Woodruff is going to be running all over town, telling everybody what a wheezy vomit my Uncle Zora is. But Griffiths are going to be disgraced forever. Surely it can't be that silly. Oh, you don't know the power of Mrs. Woodruff's tongue. Oh, dear. It appears that I fail you again. That's my own fault. I should never listen to an old snake oil peddler like you. No, indeed. You should not have. Oh, Uncle Zora, I'm sorry. I didn't mean nothing to harm your feelings. I just feel so angry and helpless and miserable and terrible and... An honorary. Still, still now, hush, don't worry. Something will happen to light our way. Lorne Green again, and here's the concluding act of Uncle Zora Comes to the Pig Festival. Melinda Jane, 
Zora? Bobby. Oh. That's them out by the tool shed. Melinda Jane? Zora, I'm home. Mama! It weren't much of a value, my going. Ain't Mary wasn't real sick after all. I know. Uncle Zora and me, we asked her to call you away. Why ever for? Because we wanted to fix that Carrie Woodruff once and for all. Melinda Jane. Aunt Mary said she'd help us because she disrespects that Mrs. Woodruff as much as I do. Kind of back in their school days, Mrs. Woodruff told everybody that Aunt Mary had warts. What in Tire Nation is going on here? Uncle Zora had a plan all figured out to to make a fool of that Carrie Woodruff in front of the whole town. Trouble is, she failed every which way. And Carrie Woodruff has been running around saying that we have evil trickster blood and maybe even lunacy that runs in the family. Carrie Woodruff wouldn't do a thing like that. Oh, uh, Dorothy, would that the words my niece lips spake were false. Alas, they're true. Lance, thanks. Mama, we didn't mean no harm. We were just trying to get that Carrie Woodruff in a disgrace so that you wouldn't be afraid of her. Melinda Jane, Mrs. Woodruff is one of my dearest friends. No, she ain't. She keeps you so scared that you've got to do what she says. I can't think of one instance where I what ever... What about the time you saw me and Freddie Baker a tree climbing? She made you put a stop to that. True. You're so scared of her, you ain't even got the gumption to win the flapjack flipping contest. Now, that's not true. I try very hard every year. Mama, you know you don't. Oh, well, now... Is that true, Dorothy? Could you indeed win at this test of housewifely skills if you but put forth the effort? Well, now, three years ago I might could have, but the good Lord knows I ain't in practice and Carrie Woodruff runs up and down her front porch every night for two weeks before the event working on her flapjack flipping. But, my dear niece Dorothy, this may be just the very thing to make a fool of Mrs. Woodruff. Or at the very least, show the town that our own Mrs. Woodruff can be defeated. <laughs> you hear that? <laughs> Correct, William Jennings Bryan. Correct. <laughs> William Jennings Bryan agrees with us. Oh, Uncle Zora, why did you have to start talking to your hog? Whatever do you mean? For a minute there, you had me believing I could stand up to Carrie Woodruff. And then you had to go and remind me that you're plum crazy. Melinda Jane! I got bad news. What is it, Freddy? Oh, oh, howdy, Mrs. Griffith. Uh, Mr. Zora, sir. Uh, Freddy, should Uncle Zora and I leave? Uh, no, ma'am. Uh, this is about Mr. Zora. Me? My poor, humble personage. Uh, Mrs. Woodruff come around and talked to my father. He's the mayor, you know. Indeed I do. Anyhow, she said she heard that you was planning to enter a hog in the pig festival. Why, yes, I am the very quadruped you see before you. Uh, well, uh, you can't enter. What? Carrie Woodruff has got the whole town believing that you're touched in the head. And that if you enter the pig festival, you're going to act peculiar and disgrace the town of Tecumseh. Freddie Baker, you know that ain't true. I know it ain't. I told my father uh, your uncle was real gentlemanly. My father said he's sorry, but once Carrie Woodruff gets the town all riled up, he can't cross her. Thank you for coming to tell us, Freddie. I'm uh, sorry, Mr. Zora, sir. No, no, my boy. It is through no fault of yours that I am dealt this disgraceful, untoward blow. Uh, thank you, sir. Sorry to trouble you, ma'am. No trouble, Freddie. Thank you. Melinda Jane, Zora, best get me my copper skillet. I've got some practicing to do. For the slapjack flipping contest? The very same. Oh, Mama, I'm so happy. I know you can do it. I know you can. <laughs> Everybody at this pig festival is looking at me like I sprung a second hand. Those are glances of admiration, my dear Dorothy, directed to the first prize winner in the Flapjack Flipping Contest. I just don't think it was such a good idea for me to beat Carrie Woodruff. Oh, nonsense, Dorothy. It was an excellent performance. Besides, Mama, just think how pretty you're going to look in that new dress from Lottie Anderson. Oh, no. I'm giving that to you, dear. But you want it for yourself, Mama. I don't want it. Dorothy Griffith! Dorothy Griffith! Dorothy Griffith! Ah, the warrior queen of Elb cries out with the Brunhilde-like wail of fervent battle-mongery. Hush now, Zora, that sinful talk. Dorothy Griffith, where are you? I'm right here, Carrie. Don't you call me Carrie, you mangy-furred sea coyote. 
From now on, you call me Mrs. Wooker. Now, calm yourself, Terry. I won the flapjack flipping contest fair and square. You have to see me in a downright deceptive way, and I'm going to let the whole town know it. Now, Terry, I told you in person that no harm was meant by my Uncle Zora's scheme. I'm talking about something much dearer to both our hearts. You're Melinda Jane stealing Freddie Baker from my Lily. I beg your pardon. I myself seen your daughter tempting Freddie Baker with the sinful act of tree climbing. Mrs. Woodruff, you ain't got no right. Freddie and me been climbing trees since we was little. Oh, and that's to put shame Babylon. If you weren't a no-count harebrained child, I'd have you tarred and feathered and driven out of town. Now you watch your tongue. No, don't think it can't be done. I kept your Uncle Zora out of the pig festival, didn't I? Mrs. Woodruff, I suggest you desist in this behavior before you show your true colors to the entire town. Go to the devil, Zora Ezekiel Miller. Very well, you have been warned. Zora Miller, if you ain't out of Tecumseh by sundown, I'm going to have you locked up as a crazy man. Carrie, Mrs. Woodruff to you. It seems to me you're acting am I crazy yourself? None of this high-handed innocence from you, Dorothy Griffith. You are a two-tongued lion to set That is a... not true. I don't know anything about Melinda Jane's interest in Freddie, and I thank you to close your mouth while I question my daughter myself. Melinda Jane? What she says is true, Mama. Freddie and I have been planning to get married for a year now. Deception! Lie! We was keeping it a secret because I didn't want to get married for two more years till I'm 18. Melinda Jane Griffith, I'm going to feed your eyes to the court. Carrie Woodruff, don't you lay a hand on my daughter. Please, oh. ladies, please, please, this is the country. We are civilized, are we not? Oh, mercy, or Baker. Oh, I'm so glad you're here. Uh, I'd like to have a word with you in privacy. It's regarding the Griffith family. I overheard the argument. I wouldn't doubt that everybody at the pig festival has overheard the argument. It's my own personal opinion that you're a mite too riled up about the innocent intentions of the young. You best ask Teddy here if he's got any intentions for Lily Woodruff, your honor, Mr. Mayor. Because if he does, I'll drop all claims on him, as is only fitting and proper for a woman of virtue. Uh, uh, uh Freddie, w- would you reply? Sir, I never was interested in Lily Woodruff. I never had nothing to do with her, except once when she said she'd tie tin cans to my dog's tail if I didn't let her carry my books to school. So I let her carry them. They were heavy books, anyway. Now, if your Lily was a woman of virtue, she'd renounce all claims to Freddie, just like I offered to. Why, you sneak devil young varmint. You're as bad as your Uncle Zora. Carrie Woodruff, that's enough of that. You owe Dorothy an apology. For what? For calling her a deceptive woman. And we all know that Dorothy Griffith is as good a citizen as the town of Tecumseh could want. Dorothy... You can't want me to apologize to you. Oh, yes, Carrie, I do. I'd be most obliged if you'd apologize to me. And to my daughter. And to my uncle. And I insist that you apologize, Carrie, right here at the pig festival. Well, I'm sorry to Dorothy and the girl, but not to that old coot, no count uncle. Why, Carrie Woodruff, my uncle is a respected man of... of medicine. And he also happens to be a personal friend of... Yes? A personal friend of William Jennings Bryan. <gasps> William Jennings Bryan. Carrie, Carrie, you had better apologize now. Is that the truth? I can safely say it is. Well, then I'm sorry. What's that, Carrie? I said I'm sorry. I'm I'm sorry, Dorothy, Melinda Jane, and Zora. You nosy people looking at me like that for? Ain't you never seen a lady apologize before? Land sakes. (laughs) Mayor Baker. Will you look at this town? Gossips and busybodies. Every last one of them. I never did like a busybody. Well, I don't neither. Well, I best go help my Lily at the bake sale. Good day, Mayor Baker. Sorry for any trouble, Dorothy. Good day, Carrie. Good day, Carrie. Melinda Jane, I can't believe you didn't tell me about your marrying agreement. Well, I can't believe you didn't fix Mrs. Woodruff for good when you had the chance. And now your mama stood up to her enough to curb her tongue. I've been wanting to do that for a long time, but I figured that I best let one of the town folks take the lead. Oh, thank you, Dorothy. It ain't Carrie I dislike. It's her gossip. I suffered under her tongue long enough. Ain't no reason to make her suffer under mine. So, Zora Miller, you're a friend of William Jennings Bryan. Indeed I am, sir. Indeed I am. Well, I, I reckon the town made a big mistake keeping your hog out of the pig festival. 
You're welcome to enter. A splendid gesture of contrition. I accept. What's the pig's name? Richie III. Yeah, well, I'll put it in right away. Anything else I can do for you? Yes, there is. As my niece Dorothy was saying, I am also a man of medicine. I'd be honored if I could open a small concession to sell a rather provocative concoction. Zora Ezekiel Miller's Snake Oil Medicine. It can cure bee sting and rheumatism, sore feet and colic, quince and Uncle Zora! Zora. Radio Theater has been brought to you by Sears Roebuck and Company, where our policy is satisfaction guaranteed or your money back. Sears, where America shops for value. Uncle Zora Comes to the Pig Festival was written by Patricia Ann Joyce, produced and directed by Fletcher Markle. Your host was Lorne Green. Our stars were Marvin Miller, Virginia Gregg, and Joan McCall. Featured in the cast were Irene Tedrow, Parley Bear, and Corey Burton. The music for Sears Radio Theater was composed and conducted by Nelson Riddle. This is Art Gilmore speaking. Associate Director of Sears Radio Theater is Ken McManus. Sound effects were created by Bud Tollefson. Mark Trella is production supervisor. And the recording engineers are Joe Wachter and Hal McDonald. The Elliot Lewis production of Sears Radio Theater is a presentation of CBI. 24 hours a day. Great news and more. News, features, sports from FM 103, KMOX FM, St. Louis. KMOX FM. CBS News. U.S. trade, salt too, and food stamps. Those were the major topics this day on Capitol Hill. And in the Senate, the food stamp program got the okay for more money. This is John Bohannon reporting on the CBS Radio Network. The Senate voted today to put an additional $620 million into the current $6 billion food stamp program. Senator George McGovern of South Dakota says the reason was to help people keep up with inflation at the supermarket. What today's action does is to make sure that no one participating in the program who is eligible to participate will have his or her benefits reduced. If we had not taken the action we took today to increase the ceiling on the program, the inflated cost of food would have wiped out anywhere from 25 to 30 percent of the benefits for several million participants. The vote was 75 to 20 in favor of the extra money for food stamps. The House has passed a similar version, and some differences will have to be resolved before the bill goes to the White House. The Senate also passed the largest trade bill in history and sent that along to President Carter. And the Senate Armed Services Committee opened its hearings on the Strategic Arms Limitations Treaty with the Soviet Union. Defense Secretary Brown told the committee that important concessions Russia made during the SALT II negotiations would be imperiled if the Senate insists on making changes in the treaty. Exxon Corporation and Standard Oil of Indiana reported second quarter profits today showing substantial increases, 20% for Exxon, 36% for Standard. But officials of both companies say the increases were because of substantial hikes in earnings from overseas operations. Ralph Nader's Congress Watch has checked up on some members of Congress who received campaign donations from oil interests during the 1977-78 campaign. And the director of the Congress Watch, Mark Green, says there's a possible connection between those donations and the version of the windfall profits tax on oil that passed the House last month. Oil special interest groups gave a million dollars to members of Congress for their re-election campaigns in 1977. 78, and then a year later, when members of Congress have to vote on a measure of interest to the industry, 95% of them who receive the most money favor the industry. You know, when the public wonders why Washington cannot solve the energy crisis, I think one major reason is big oil money influencing political campaigns and then political votes. You take the money out of politics, I think the public will be better served on energy policy. Records from the Federal Election Commission show 26 major oil political action committees gave more than $1,100,000 to congressional candidates. President Carter made a speech today in the East Room for his White House staff, more than 300 people. He told them not to worry about their jobs as long as they're competent, loyal, and work hard. Mr. Carter also said he would have made his cabinet changes differently if he had anticipated the impact on the general public. And he told the staffers that he also has had some second thoughts about his domestic summit recently at Camp David. And he says he thinks he should have invited more Republicans to that summit meeting. 
In Waycross, Georgia, Charles Campbell is a bargain hunter. So when he saw 500 surplus parking meters piled outside a city building, he recognized some potential profit, so he bought them all. The next step was to find others who would want to buy them, and he soon found a large market. Campbell says most people buy them to use as banks. Some, he says, just want them as souvenirs or conversation pieces. But then he says he got a call from the mayor of an eastern town who had a rather startling use for some of the old discarded parking meters. The mayor wanted to buy them to use as parking meters. John Bohannon, CBS News.